few places still standing downtown that I can actually trace Al Capone to. Duck! 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 Thank you. Uh, the key to Abdur Capone's trial that he used to buy all of his underwear at that Marshall Fields that is now the Macy's. Uh, they would have cost him the equivalent of like 500 bucks a pair. Really fancy underpants. On the right, the LaSalle Wacker building. I can't quite trace Capone to this one, but I can't trace his gang here. After Capone went to prison, uh, they were operating under the leadership of Frank the Enforcer Nitty out of a room on the sixth floor. Cops busted into there one day, shot Frank the Enforcer Nitty up pretty good. They didn't kill him, but it's not like he lived to a ripe old age or anything. Very few of the gangsters did. Gang leader was just not a job where you had a long life expectancy. But you did get to buy really nice underwear while you were here. So, you know, sometimes you just have to make some decisions about what's really important to you. Over on the right here, rising up into the sky directly to our right, 77 Wacker, the United Building, 1990 to Stefano and Partners, Ricardo will feel the architects. Up top is a postmodern take of those old rows of Greek columns. You get a Greek-style pediment roof. Four of the columns in the middle extend all the way down, tying the entire building together. Endlessly classical and endlessly modern at the same time. I don't think that one is ever going to go out of style. There are those who would say 55 Wacker next to it kind of has. It's designed by a brutalist architect named Otto Stark, who happens to be my next door neighbor. Every time I see him, I'm like, hey, Mr. Stark, just tell him to be like Spider Man. Straight ahead, this uh, cone shaped one, the white one, 17th Church of Christ Science is by Harry Weiss, a guy who will come up a lot over the course of this tour. And to the right, climbing into the sky, the green and gold one, probably my favorite in the city, the Carbide and Carbon Building by Burnham and Burnham, Daniel Burnham's sons, from 1930. Now, I always thought it was an urban legend that they wanted that to look like an Art Deco version of a champagne bottle. But then somebody yeah. dug up Daniel Burnham Jr.'s diary, and there it was. The builders wanted it to look like the color of an old champagne bottle. And in 1930, that was kind of subversive of them, really. Prohibition was still going on. Champagne wasn't legal in the United States. Now that that stopped anybody in Chicago from drinking it. Or anywhere, really, but it's been estimated.